Hi, welcome to today's lesson on the strength or the effects of intermolecular forces. We are jumping straight into things today and we're gonna begin by talking about nonpolar molecules. You may remember nonpolar molecules as molecules that don't have poles. But in actuality, when these molecules get crashed into by other molecules or they smack into the walls of their container, the electron cloud warps, which forms temporary partial charges on these molecules. And that is called specifically a dispersion force. On this molecule here, we have an atom that has been banged into and that shifted electrons into this region, making a temporary partial negative, and the lack of electrons down here has created a temporary partial positive charge. We also have polar molecules, which are polar all the time, and this is because of the way that they're built. Their internal structure is going to have electrons be drawn from one area over to another. So um, in this case, we have a bromomethane, and all of the electrons are being drawn away from the hydrogens, away from the carbon, and into the bromine, which in total is going to give the bromine a partial negative charge, leaving the opposite end of the molecule to be uh, partially positive. The intermolecular force between polar molecules are called dipole-dipole forces. Then lastly, we have molecules that exhibit hydrogen bonding, which is a dipole-dipole force that gets upgraded. It has more strength, and that is due to a hydrogen on the molecule in addition to a hydrogen, uh, I'm sorry, in addition to a fluorine, an oxygen, or a nitrogen atom. In this case, we have a water molecule. We have both the hydrogen and the oxygen. You don't have to have all three, just one of the three. So the hydrogen and the oxygen on a polar molecule is going to create a hydrogen bond instead of the dipole-dipole force. Now, this is the part of chemistry where we convert from individual atoms and molecules up into substances. So this tiny little bit of water I have in this glass is a sample of water. This would be a substance. This is macro chemistry because I can see it with my own eyeballs. Um, looking in at tiny little individual water molecules can't happen at any level, but it can't happen. Everything we know about chemistry has come from observing the behavior of samples of water and then going back and kind of like extrapolating what the picture of water must look like. And we do that by observing substances, full on samples. And here, um, due to differences in boiling point, melting point, and other physical properties that we can observe, we have determined what these intermolecular forces are, if that makes sense. So the stronger an intermolecular force is, is going to um, have a more dramatic effect on particular physical properties, which we are going to examine right now. So if we have strong intermolecular forces, our molecules are really going to want to stick to each other. Remember, we're kind of imagining that these molecules are like magnets, and the intermolecular force is kind of like a magnetic force holding them together. So when this happens, we have this strong force. Um, water molecules, for instance, want to hang out and stick to other water molecules. When this happens, it makes it difficult for the substance to separate its particles and to change phase. Um, so if you think of a liquid, right, a liquid, all the particles are kind of close together. And in a gas, they've spread out and they kind of drift off and go their separate ways. When you have a strong force, it's super difficult for that to happen. So um, we're going to talk now about strong forces and how that affects physical properties. Specifically boiling point, like I was mentioning, when you have a strong intermolecular force, it's difficult to convert into from a liquid into a gas. So the definition of boiling point is just the temperature where that happens. Your teacher may also refer to it as the normal boiling point, and that is just the boiling point of a substance at standard atmospheric pressure. So basically at sea level. If we have substances with very strong intermolecular forces, like having a hydrogen bond or a dipole-dipole bond even, those boiling points are going to be decently high. Uh, the stronger the force, the higher the boiling point, because it's going to take more energy to get the particles from their liquid phase to separate out into the gas phase. 
Conversely, if they have a weak force, like a dispersion force, then they're going to have really low boiling points. And the reason for that is because when you have a weak force, the molecules don't really care about the other molecules. They're busy doing their own thing. They're not really attracted to the molecules around them. And for that reason, you only have to add the tiniest amount of energy to get them to boil. If you Google the definition for vapor pressure, you're going to get a really scary definition, but you can summarize it the way I have here. I like to describe vapor pressure as the willingness of a substance to evaporate and become a gas. If you think about it, snow and rain puddles, they don't have to boil in order to dry up. They just evaporate and their force in which they push up against the atmosphere basically to join the atmosphere is their vapor pressure, how hard they push. Pressure, pressure is a force of pushing. So substances that are really willing to evaporate have a high vapor pressure. They push really, really hard to get up into the atmosphere. If substances have a strong intermolecular force, think something with hydrogen bonds, perhaps water, uh, in that case, it's going to be super difficult for the water to be willing to evaporate. The, the forces between the water molecules are going to hold all those molecules together. So they don't want to spread out and become a gas. They don't want to evaporate. So for that reason, they'd have a very low vapor pressure. They really have no desire to evaporate. And if you think of a substance with very weak intermolecular forces, think something like acetone, which is nail polish remover, that's going to have a super high vapor pressure because the molecules don't really want to hang out. They're, they're just like, yeah, whatever. So they evaporate really quickly and easily. Another one, you may remember learning this in middle school, you also have surface tension. Surface tension is the ability of a substance to stick to itself and surfaces. And this is why when you wash the dishes, they need a minute to dry. Um, when you get out of the shower, the walls of the shower have little droplets all over them. Even if you think of air drying your hands after hand sanitizer versus water, um, the water sticks to your hands really, really well. And it also has that low vapor pressure, so it doesn't want to evaporate. Um, surface tension is it kind of beating up and saying, I want to hang out with molecules like me. I don't really want to evaporate. I don't want to, uh, absorb into a paper towel, that kind of thing. So if a substance has really strong forces, like water, it's going to have a pretty high surface tension. Really what this means is that the water molecules are all going to clump up together and they, um, they, they want to stick together. They have really strong forces holding them together. So when it comes to water droplets, you will see that um, water droplets like to stick to walls and to themselves. Two water droplets will kind of just like blob together and make a bigger water droplet. If you are really daring, you can take a glass of water and slowly overfill it. Even it works best if you have like a, a dropper that you can add small amounts of water to the top. You'll actually get this like bubble where the water actually rises out of the glass um, and it, it'll overfill the glass. It'll all blob up. You may even see it as uh, water droplets on the surface of a coin. That's a common lab. Um, that'll be a video on this channel soon. Surface tension, they want to stick together. They're kind of going to they're kind of gonna blob up. If a substance has a very low surface tension, it really has no desire to stick to itself. That's because it has weak intermolecular forces. Those molecules don't really care to hang out with each other. And that's really it. There are plenty of things, uh, physical properties that are affected by intermolecular forces, but those are some of the most common ones. Um, it's important to note that the um, vapor pressure and the boiling point will also affect phase of matter. And this is kind of where um, the halogens come in that we were talking about in the dispersion force video. The halogens have dispersion forces and because you have more electrons as you go down the group of the periodic table, your uh, strength of your intermolecular force is going to increase. The dispersion force gets stronger and stronger the more electrons that you have. So fluorine has a weaker intermolecular force than iodine because it has fewer electrons. That's why you can find fluorine as a gas in nature. 
Chlorine is also a gas, but bromine has a little bit of a stronger force because it has more electrons, which is going to increase the strength of the dispersion force. For that reason, bromine is found as a liquid out in nature, and iodine, again, stronger force, able to hold those particles together, and iodine is going to be found as a solid in nature. That's all for today. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and I'll see you there.